Well, welcome back to Colorado Springs Small Engine Repair, and spring is in the air. <laughs> it is 72 degrees outside. I can finally come out in the garage and have the garage open and shorts and t-shirt and work and not freeze my butt off. Um, hopefully, we're going to wrap up that little snapper uh, snowblower. This is the little tiny piece that held us up the other day. That's all that is that goes from the from the engine uh, to the carburetor is that little piece. I could have tried to make it, but I wouldn't have the bend right. So, um, so snapper snowblower. Let me. I'm looking around. Um, I got a Husqvarna chainsaw that we need to finish up. Um, it needs a chain. The the chain on it. I tried to sharpen it, and it was just bad. Um, so we're gonna put a new chain on that. Um, Time-wise, let's see. We have a kinetic log splitter um, that we got some new bearings for, so we should be able to get those in. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for uh, this episode. So let's get busy and let's get some stuff done. The snapper is ready. Now you saw me also sneak a new carburetor in there, didn't you? Um, the carburetor that was on there um, has the high-end adjustment on it, but it also has a um, idle adjustment. You can see right there, but there's no uh, tip on the edge of that um, to adjust the idle. So somebody cranked it in there and snapped it off. So. I just went ahead and put a carburetor on there that you can't adjust, which is fine for these snow blowers. So it's ready to go. So let's go on to the next thing. All right, this is the Husqvarna that was brought in to me. Um, it needed to tune up, so I've already, um, you know, made sure that the oiler is working correctly for the bar. Uh, changed the spark plug, put a new air filter on it. Um, it it runs great. Uh, I I took the exhaust off and disinspected the piston because uh, I was told it was ran uh, with a really dull blade or a dull blade, uh, a dull chain. Um, and that's not, you always want your chain sharp. You want the saw cutting at its optimal. Um, and with the dull chain, the saw is really working hard to make a cut. And if you're really, you know, revving it high and grinding it in there, you, you can do damage um, to the piston. I looked, it looked fine. Um, I tried sharpening the, ch the chain and it still wouldn't cut right. So I just went ahead and ordered a new one. So we just need to, or oh, also on this one, um, right here is the little screw for the adjustment. That was gone too. Um, so I had to order that because you couldn't adjust the tension of the chain. All you had holding it on in the right thing was the bolts here so I put that in there so we just need to install the chain and it's gonna be ready to go The hardest part of that job <laughs> is getting the chain untangled. Uh, you're just kind of chasing it around and trying to figure it out. Um, I got the chain set where I want it as far as the slack in it. It's on there. Um, I'll start it up. I'll run it a little bit and then I'll check it again and make uh, any necessary adjustments. But that's it on the chainsaw. So let's uh, go work on this kinetic log splitter. All right, if you have not seen one of these before, they're pretty cool. It's just an electric motor. Um, and these big flywheels right here store up all the energy. Um, got a handle that mounts in here. 
All right, you put your piece of wood. Uh, this is the piece that pushes, and there's a spring down here. Uh, it hooks up. Um, but you turn it on, it's building up the energy. This is kind of the safety. And you move that, you pull this back. When you pull this back, it allows this to free, uh, or not to free, there's a gear in there, and the gear pushes it. Um, this is broken and bent, let me show you. So the customer brought it to me and said it just made a god awful noise and you know, it stopped working. Um, I started digging into it and I found these bearings. You can see the outer piece is missing. Um, same on this one, which makes sense. I mean, you're, you got all this momentum and force built up and you got metal on metal and over time, something's gotta give. Um, it almost looks like this right here is bent but never working on that model. I don't know if it's supposed to sit off a little bit. So what we're gonna do um, is I ordered new bearings. Um, we're gonna put the new bearings on it, put it back together, and I think I might have a piece of wood over in the side yard that will work in there, and uh, we'll try it out. We'll see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. Never used one of these before. Um, well, that's probably not a good piece. Maybe we'll just use this one. Set your piece of wood on there. Uh, of course, you would have the safety protector stuff on there. Which, I have all of it. But for what I'm doing, I'm not going to put it all on because if it, if it doesn't work for some reason, I, I don't want to pull it all back off. Um, just make sure you stay away from this and this. It's like it gets to the end and it starts skipping the tooths. So let's take a look at that. I just unplugged it, so it's not, it's not plugged in. Just unhook this spring. Take this off. And then the 
teeth are worn. And my thought would be, this is such a little piece of wood. I mean, that, you know, you would have a bigger log up here. So maybe it's not designed to go all the way here. I, like I said, I've never used one of these, um, but it seems that the bearings have done the trick. So let's put the safety covers back on. Done working on that log splitter. Um, got a lot done today. Log splitter, chainsaw, snow blower. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a wrap on this one. I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.